Hello, everyone. Thank you for, for joining and to have this opportunity. Thank you also to Jackie Jima. My name is Victor Canton. I'm the CEO of uh, Enkitech. Uh, we are uh, a new, recently created startup uh, regarding, uh, so our purpose is to provide automation uh, to the vertical farms through robotics, inter uh, vision systems, and artif uh, artificial intelligence. So, um, Okay, it's a little bit hard for me to see the presentation because I see it very small, so uh, I will try to, to, to adapt to it. So, sorry. So what we have, what we did uh, when we started thinking about uh, this uh, activity to, and to provide uh, uh, value added to the vertical farms, uh, we did this analysis to, to check what are the main pains for, the, for this uh, sector. So what we see is that uh, the, we, we, we uh, discovered several uh, articles and studies about it, and we saw that the main the main effort uh, for this uh, this activity is the manual handling, so the, the labor. So it's uh, up to forty nine percent, depending on the on the, on the type of uh, of uh, vertical farm. So what we decided to, to to okay, what we can do for for this kind of uh, of uh, of uh, industry. So uh, I would like to, to, to join me to, uh, to make a journey to how we got, come to the idea, to the, to the final uh, proposal for this kind of, uh, of, of, pro of uh, proposal we want to make. So if you can change the next slide, please. Okay, so uh, we thought it uh, makes sense to, to introduce uh, automation to, to this kind of, uh, of to vertical farms. So, yeah, uh, sorry, I forgot one to mention this. Uh, okay, if we do, you are a business uh, running vertical farms and half of the, your efforts are on main level, uh, it's not scalable. So if you want to build, and you have built an, uh, already a, a vertical farm and you want to build another one to grow, so the effort for, the, for uh, creating this new, uh, so you, have, you will have to duplicate that, uh, that effort, so, so the labor effort. So it is hardly scalable. So we thought, okay, let's introduce automation here. So the first thing it came to our minds because uh, the, we are uh, we have gathered two people here in this uh, in this company. So myself, I have uh, 18 years experience in the industrial sector, mainly for electronic manufacturing. But I've been introducing uh, uh, new technologies like collaborative robots, the use of smartwatches, digital twins, and this kind of uh, things. And my colleague, uh, Eugeni, he's uh, the CTO. So he is uh, an expert with vision system applying artificial intelligence uh, on, the, on, on it. So, okay, first thing that came to, my, to our mind was, okay, let's try to apply uh, to, uh, robotics to, to the, the vertical farm. So, Okay, so let's do this journey and see what are the, the milestones that we have to, to, to go to, to, to get. Okay, if you could change the next slide, please. Okay, so we do the, the first step. We take one uh, industrial robot, uh, traditional robot to the, to, the, to the place, to the shop floor. And we saw that the first uh, things that we don't like it or that, that are not covered with this, is that the, this kind of robots are huge, so they can handle 1,000 1, kilos or more, so they can get a car and put it on a, on a production line, like, thing like this. So we have uh, these robots that, that can be dangerous, and the installation, it's, uh, it has to be with some fences, it has to be to, uh, to avoid that people get into it and get uh, injured. So this is one of the first thing we saw that uh, regarding safety. And also we saw that if we try to implement this kind of uh, technology on the, uh, on the vertical farm, uh, that we are not uh, producing uh, industrial uh, typical metallic uh, topics like screws or, or cockpits or whatever. So the plants uh, and the supports where we have this kind of plants uh, are not so repetitive. So uh, they grow differently each time. The supports uh, normally, so this, these, uh, these farms uh, are run by people, so we don't need, or they don't need this kind of uh, fixed position for everything. So for that, for the robot, it's not nice because you could have a lot of pickup errors and so on. So this is the second topic. 
And the third one is that, uh, yes, we are not handling uh, metallic units. So we are handling crops that can be from lettuce to tomatoes to strawberries, whatever. So these are uh, products that are cut at much softer than industrial products. So they could get damaged. Okay, so uh, they, having this in mind, we make an, another iteration and see and say, if you can change to the next slide, please. Okay, I, this is too much, uh, uh, the previous one, please. Okay, thank you. So the next slide, uh, so we focus on the first problem that we, we, we found regarding the, the problem with the safety. Okay, so we have already in the market a product, it's called uh, Collaborative Robots. And also we have this problem that we had these fences and the layout was not nice to, to integrate on the vertical farm. So we, we thought about, okay, let's introduce collaborative robots with some, some approaches to have extended work range. So we don't have a static uh, robot in one place uh, because the vertical farms, it's not, uh, it can be around just one robot. So let's do this approximation. So with this approach, uh, I don't know if you are aware of what, about these technologies, but collaborative robots uh, have uh, uh, technology embedded that, uh, that they can be uh, configured in a way that we can uh, have these uh, uh, systems in place that can work hand by hand by, with, uh, with uh, humans. So <clears throat> that means we can avoid fences, but does mean that, that doesn't mean that we can put it in any way. So uh, we have to, to configure the system that in a safe way or avoid the risk. So we, we will always have to make a risk assessment. So it's, it is a mandatory topic. And also that uh, with, we have several ways of uh, making uh, this work range more uh, larger. So here, just, just two samples, we can put a, a collaborative robot uh, within a linear axis. So we, we can expand the, the, the range of the robots linearly. And also there are other ways to, to expand this, like in vertical ways and yeah, we can do mainly whatever and with, uh, with the products we already have in the market. Or even though we can do this kind of, uh, um, of uh, mounting of the robot uh, uh, in, in a mobile collaborative robot also. Uh, so we can have this robot available for any, any place on the, on the shop floor. Okay, so we think that we have solved the first step, which is the, the safe uh, topic. And the, the next one, uh, regarding the vision. So we have this, uh, this production process that it's not so repetitive as the industrial one. So we are trying to introduce these technologies. So, okay, this is kind, kind of a joke. So a tomato is not a screw. Uh, so if you use directly uh, the traditional business systems uh, that are, are available in the industry for the past, I don't know, 20 years maybe. Uh, so you, you have this kind of algorithm that, that allows you to, show, to look for shapes or for some uh, uh, edges or some, something like this that are not quite uh, adaptable to this, uh, the organic uh, natural nature of, this, uh, of the crops and so on. So maybe we could uh, use these systems just for the supports of the of the growing uh, supports of, of the vertical farms, but for sure not for the for the crops. So we make a new iteration. We go to a, uh, a next step. So next slide, please. <laughs> Thank you very much. So next step is that uh, to add artificial intelligence to this uh, vision system. So with that. Uh, we provide the robot with more accurate coordinates to fulfill the task. So, um, for instance, here we have, we have uh, two samples. Uh, if you click next, I hope the, the video will show. So here we have some strawberries. Uh, this is a, a stream video that uh, regarding uh, the strawberries. Uh, and here we are detecting with this artificial intelligence algorithm, we are looking for uh, red strawberries that are ready to be uh, harvested. So here, with this artificial intelligence, we don't have to, to, to say to the system all the boundaries of everything, how to find it, and so on. So we get this directly from the algorithm, and we, are, we will be able, always uh, able to, to improve that algorithm. But the, the idea behind it is that this is completely adaptable to the, the really reality that the vision system will have in front of us. 
And the next one, it's regarding the, 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 the growing soil for the, for the vegetables that we, are, we want to grow on the vertical farm. So this could be a, a, a project by traditional vision system. But if we apply this, the same approach the, with artificial intelligence, uh, we, could, uh, we can have the, the, the coordinates for, uh, that, okay, sorry, I, I get some, saw some, some messages, sorry. Uh, so here you can see that uh, if you can do, to play the next video, please, uh, you will see that we can uh, see the, detect the growing soil independently on the angle of viewing of the camera. So we, we have this, uh, this vision system embedded on the, on the robot. Uh, we will be very flexible and very fast uh, picking and everything and using it on the, on the vertical form. So the idea behind is basically that we can adapt the, the, these algorithms uh, to, to, to adapt to the minimal changes we could have on the, on the crops growing. Okay, so next slide, please. <laughs> Okay, with the last problem we had, we are not uh, we are not dealing with uh, with industrial uh, or with the same product like screws, cockpits, or any kind of mechanical uh, product. So we are uh, dealing here with uh, with crops. It could be tomatoes, it could be lettuce, it could be everything. So if we have to deal with it, so if we look uh, at the the market, well, what are the are already uh, solutions that are there? We saw that we have this kind of grippers. This is just a sample, but for each, uh, almost for each need, we will we will be able to find uh, a gripper able to or fit it to, to the to the need. So we have with this approach, with this journey, uh, we could have safe environment. We could uh, adapt to the to the to the reality that it's in front of the robot, and we can uh, process uh, almost any kind of uh, of uh, of crop. So uh, this is the, the whole journey that we have done to, to do this. So first, uh, next slide, please. So just as conclusions. Okay, so first, uh, with first conclusion is that uh, most of the hardware needed is already in the market. So maybe some specific use case we will, we will, we will need uh, to make a, a customized solution for it. But for most of the use cases, we will be able to find something that already exists and it's already debugged and it's already working. So this is a nice to, to, to have an idea in mind. And what are the main challenges that we would have if, we want to, if, we, if you want to make this journey on, the, on, your, uh, on your vertical farm or if you are a vertical farm integrator, uh, how you, can you provide this? So uh, the main challenges that we have found is that First one is to find the, the suitable process for to apply this technology. Because for instance, uh, this is very uh, applied to uh, vertical uh, supports, uh, growing uh, vertical farms. But maybe for instance, the, the whole package that, that we have seen, it's not uh, quite suitable for, for tray. Because for instance, if we want to, to move trays with a collaborative robot, for the, in design with these collaborative robots cannot handle huge uh, weights. So maybe just uh, the robotic solution is not, not, not uh, suitable there, uh, but maybe the, the vision system, we can use it for monitoring or for uh, other purposes. So the, 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 the main challenge, the first one, is to find the use case and the process that we can apply this technology so we can reduce the, the labor task uh, done manually on the, the vertical farm. The second challenge, it's to find uh, an integrator that is able to deploy that hardware. Right now, what we have seen is that uh, we, have, we, we don't have so many, uh, a network of integrators is not so uh, big uh, to, to provide to vertical France. So what we saw, we saw is that uh, we, the, one of the approaches is to get these uh, integrators of technology that are focused on the industry of the manufacturing industry and get them to, to deploy this kind of uh, hardware on the vertical farms. So this is kind of a challenge, but uh, this is one of the, 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 the steps that we're taking. To. And the third challenge is uh, to find a power platform that controls these robots. Because, okay, you, can, you have the hardware, you have the software, uh, the, the use case, 
but somebody has to 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 control that robot and to exploit the data that we are acquiring with this system. Basically, here we are providing automation, but uh, we are providing automation with technology that is digital based. So we are uh, with this uh, with this approach, we can take a lot of information from the robots from the vision system. So at the end. If we have a platform that allows to control the robot and the vision system from inside, and then with all the data produced with this, we can exploit this uh, data and take advantage of it and, and find improvements for our vertical farms. So this is uh, yeah main challenge because right now, uh, as we have seen, there is not so many uh, this uh, this kind of platforms available for vertical farms. So that's uh, that's it from my side. Uh, I hope. It was and your interest, and if you have any questions, I'd be glad to answer it.